Cheers. Steve Willis, a.k.a. Commando, welcome to the Wine O'Clock Show. Welcome. Cheers, cheers, cheers. It is Friday at 6 o'clock and it's time to wind down from the week that was. How's your week been? It's been fantastic. It's been busy. Yes. Um, I think... When I get asked that question, there's two things I think about. Yeah. Personal life you know, and the role as a father with four kids. Mm. And the other aspect is the professional life. And I know what it's what my life is like through my perspective yeah. because I live it in that sense. But then I'm also at the same time trying to glean an understanding of how the person asking me that question or the like um, perceives like my life to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's, a, it's a funny dynamic because we find ourselves in that space where you know people are quite intrigued because they don't know us personally but at the mm. same time they feel like they know mm. us. Mm. Yeah. Like I actually lose track of days. Mm. And, and a Monday could be a Friday to me and a Friday a Monday. It's, it's a day is a day. Yep. Like I, I remember that there was a point in time <laughs> in life when you would look forward to the weekend. Mm. Yes. But because a lot of the work that we do, especially when we're training big groups or mm. doing stuff mm. in an ambassadorial way, um, is on weekends because mm. that's when people don't work or yes. tend not to work as much. Do you still train groups? Um, I do, yeah, yes. Yeah. Mm. Yes, there's been... Um, I, I do some corporate work, so internal with um, like Red Balloon. Mm, mm. So, you know, a few training sessions a month um, with them, like out mm. in the park. Mm. Um, some other work with, uh, with Sydney Trains mm. internally. Mm. So, um, you know, around the training, the nutrition and I guess you know, mindset yeah, or just, yeah. you know, our approaches, philosophies to life. Mm -hmm. And then just, you know, the everyday punters. I've got some one-on-one mm -hmm. -on -one clients mm -hmm. and other groups from time to time. It's fun. It's never ending, but it's, it's, it's fun. And I love what I do when as serious as, you know, certain aspects of it are, um, try to make it as, as fun and lighthearted mm, as, mm, as possible. Mm. Although people don't perceive me to be that no. <laughs> lighthearted, you know, kind of you know, like fun. You, too hard. Yeah. <laughs> you make them work too hard. Well, only, it's only been on one TV show that I've yeah. <laughs> How do you find time for your children and your wife, Michelle? You know, do you have... Yeah. Uh, a, a roster are you allocated <laughs> yeah. with that or are you no, just trying to sneak moments in all the time yeah I, i'm just I, I i'm it's at the forefront of my mind um it's um and in the present moment so i'm you know little axel and my eldest so axel and brianna the eldest they live with myself and michelle and mm -hmm. then jack and ella live with their mum so um you know i i get out and see jack and ella as much as i can and um, I'll take them to school or pick them up from school, you know, have them on the every weekend, every second weekend, you know, kind of work that out with mm. um, with uh, their mum and then school holidays. Yep. So, you know, school holidays, you know, there's chunks of time. So we can, mm. you know, I love to pack up the four-wheel drive and go camping and, mm, you know, nice. do all that type mm. of stuff and just immerse ourselves mm. in nature and yeah. be human yep. and connect, yep. kind of unplug from um, society, society mm, absolutely. which... Which can be fun. I think you learn a lot about yourself and, and about each other when you're kind of nurturing those those relationships mm -hmm. in that sense. And it doesn't have to be, you know, super intense. And I think that's where a lot of us in life, we, we want to undertake a new venture or do something new. Mm. We kind of, we're that, that goldfish yes. in the bowl and we just like tip ourselves out. <laughs> and we're just flapping around on the table like wildly. And we scratch our head going... Why am I not coping? Yeah. Why can't I deal with this? Because you've just upended your life, mm. yeah. rather than the, mm. uh, like a process of slowly doing it mm. and using consistency. We're about to hit summer very shortly, and I know me, I have no motivation when it comes to getting out of bed and starting a fitness routine. Yeah. Um, what's some, I guess, some advice and some tips on people to give somebody who wants to get going but mm. just can't find that motivation or that energy to get out of bed and, and do it? Yes, it's um, it's a difficult one, and it's that's probably the question that I'm asked the most. Mm. Um, so I'm constantly pondering on it and working through it for myself. Mm. And I think a lot of it is based in our philosophies and and our intentions. Mm -hmm. You know, what is it that we are striving or working towards achieving? Now, is that based in the status quo mm. and how and trying to fit in 
Mm. And, and and or does it genuinely resonate or, or speak to us? Mm. And um, and that's the question that that each of us need to ask ourselves. But it's quite daunting mm, because yeah. a lot of us a don't know the answer. Yeah. Or Why are you um, doing it? Yeah. 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 And 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 it's 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 hard not to have a question that you can't mm. answer. Mm. But that's where the action component comes into it. Like the interaction with life and the participation, mm. Mm. whether that be with other human beings or just in, in life, in nature, yep. um, per se. And um, you know, some people, they like to go to the gym and they like to lift weights and do strength work. Others just love being outdoors in the go park and, and, and doing exercise. So. Ask yourself the question, what are the things that you really enjoy doing? Mm. And if you find it difficult to do it on your own, well, that's where we operate best as humans, mm. and that's doing things in a group. group. Yeah. Because there's there's accountability mm. to others within the group, even if it's just mm. yeah. a friend or, mm. or someone to train with. Um, that's the other thing. If you don't know certain things, kind of working in those groups with people who are already there, mm. because then you've got, actions to emulate yeah and then you find your own way mm. it, it and, and it's it's not a quick fix nothing is going to just yep click but what it will do when kind of following that course of action is you'll answer those questions for for yourself and the motivation will start to come from within it'll mm. be intrinsic mm. whereas a lot of the the messages you know out there in the health and fitness health and well-being sphere mm. Is very ba- is is based in being external to yourself yep. or superficial. Yep. Like it's all about having a great backside <laughs> or all the six yeah. pack and the like. Yes. And again, mm. it's all very superficial yeah, stuff. Yeah, like yeah. we're all human. Mm. You know, what are the things that help us to be the best that we can in this present moment, mm. day in day out? Mm. You know, the choice between better from worse, and um, you know, what's a, a strategy, a plan. Mm that we can put into place and then um, and then execute. Yeah, I hope yeah. it made sense. Yeah, yeah, yes, totally. Yeah, no, totally. I'm very philosophical so yeah, and I like I to I like say. to like, get in the get deep in end. there. I'm very <laughs> curious in that in that yeah. sense. Is that the first thing you address when you have someone coming to you that's addre- you know looking at their fitness? Do you go straight, straight to their straight mindset? Into their mindset? Mm. First, I don't know the client at all. Mm. I don't know um, where the client's head's at mm. unless I ask them certain questions yeah. and I don't know how they move. Yep. Mm. So in a fundamental sense, I want to see how they move. Mm. You know, things like squats, push-ups mm. you know, mm. and, and the like give me a sound indication of where the work needs to be done. Yep. And, um, and based in how they move um, also shows you their commitment to those movements. Yeah, yeah. You've been such a big beacon, I guess, and such a great motivator for in the weight loss uh, industry. Uh, you, you went on to be the um, fitness guru, oh, I guess. Waiting for Come it. Like, what is she going to say? I'm the biggest loser. <laughs> Let me have another drink. Hold on. I'll just... What was, it about, my nerves. what was it about going on The Biggest Loser that you loved so much? Uh, helping people to, um, to change their lives. Mm. And not just for the duration of the show. Mm-hmm. Like I understand that the show is a show. It yep. was a reality TV show. The objective was to take you know sixteen contestants at the start, and by the end of the twelve weeks, have a winner. Yep. And you know follow that journey and that process. And you know for the viewer sitting in the lounge room, they would kind of align with a particular family or an mm. individual, and they'd really because they 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 felt best that connected connection. to that that connection. Yeah. And um. And I think that's important in that sense, you know, on a TV show because that gets the eyeballs, the sticky eyeballs, which, you know, any TV show show needs. But so that's kind of in in in, in your mind, you know, something that you're you're constantly addressing. The other one is your job as a trainer is to help these people turn their lives around. Mm. And you ask them the question at the start, you know, where did it all go wrong? And a lot of them just don't, know. don't have a clue. Yeah. No. Do you still like, mentor gosh, them afterwards? Yeah, yeah, like all of the contestants that I've trained, either as individuals or collectively in, in like the black team that I used to have. Yep. Um, you know, I still keep in contact with a lot of them, mm. especially mm. the last season that we did where I had the um, the Avale family, which mm. were the, the Samoan family. Yeah. But yeah, it's just to see them, and not just the Avales, but 
you know, the contestants just turn mm. their lives around, mm. you know, Speaks for the better. Mm. Are you as hard and as tough on television, off television? Do you think, <laughs> like, you've just been talking to me for like five, ten minutes. Um, oh, no, no, no. If I go to one of your training sessions, you're going to be like yelling. No, <laughs> no, like, uh, no, the, um, standing there with his arms crossed. Yeah, yeah. So you're going to be doing it for yourself and not for him. That's the key. And, yeah. and, and that's very much, you know, where it's, um, where it's at. And I only want people working as hard as they can relative both physically and mentally to where they're at at mm. any given point in time. Mm. And, we're, and I understand that we're all on this, this journey of life. We are life, but um, you know, some of us are in a, in, a, in a fitness sense or a well-being sense mm. are on completely different or in completely different places mm. to one another. And that's where I think it's important, that relative piece. Yeah. This year, you, I think this is your first year you were the ambassador for Are You OK? Have you been yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I came on this year with um, with Are You OK. Yeah. What made you want to get involved with a with a charity or with a corporation like well, Are You OK? I, I think it's it's a fantastic um, fantastic message, mm. and it's 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 a great question to um, to, to help it, connect yeah. because a lot of us again when we're dealing with our own stuff, mm. that's hard enough. Let alone, you know, asking the question mm. of a friend and then having to when they unload on you. Oh, just how, you, just how do I now how deal, you deal with, with all, all of this? Yeah, yeah. You, um, I think, came out this year and admitted to having suffered from depression yourself. Is mm. that why you got involved with Are You OK? No, no. No? I actually, the story behind Are You OK, so they contacted me and, and asked if um, if I'd be interested. Mm. And, um, and I yeah, definitely, and again, I didn't have really any other expectation because there's a whole host of different ambassadors from mm. from all walks of mm. life that um, I think resonate well with with the wider community um, they asked if, if I'd be interested in, in you know kind of talking mm. about um, you know my life and they, again being ex-military um, and the transition into or back into a civilian life mm. and you know dealing with I guess the you know, a lot of the issues, that. yeah. Because yeah, one of the things I think word. you said is, I think ten of your friends who um, oh yeah, at least have yeah. committed suicide, and then mm. I think forty-one military and what's well, more now, yeah. yeah. Is that something that you want to sort of get into that space and sort of try and develop something that's going to help our troops when they come back from war yeah, to try and help with that loss? I guess for myself to develop thing or something, it's um, gosh, I think there's enough on my plate, yeah. but um. <laughs> There's definitely a lot of fantastic businesses and organisations mm. out there doing great things at the mm. moment. Mm. If I can utilise my profile to, to bring greater awareness to those already established, mm. Um, mm. I guess, means of, um, of, of, of helping others, um, I think that's probably a better use of, of time and energy. Mm. There's an organisation that I've been um, working with um, which is with you, with me, mm. and they've identified that you know a lot of the messages out there about what ex-service people are, mm. alcoholics, PTSD, and suicidal. Mm. You know, like they're not very good messages, no. mm. and they're kind of played on. Yeah. And it's like, what are we actually doing about to, supporting? To, it, yeah, yeah support because them. and and that's what with mm. you, with um, me is doing. They're based in the corporate. Um, sector mm -hmm. and they're helping in that transition of taking the skills that they've had in the military and kind of converting them into a language that the corporates understand. Yeah. Like what do you want your um, to legacy it. to be? My legacy? That I was a kind Apple. human being. <laughs> yep. That I was, yeah, it's, um, yeah, a good dad, a kind human being, you know, help people when, um, when they needed help, mm. you know, if they if they asked, and and I guess creating and helping to um, provide a flourishing environment for for the future generations. Mm. What's next for you then? What's on your plate? honestly? I find myself in a bit of a transition stage. You know, early forties. <laughs> you know, midlife crisis. <laughs> You're not going to go buy a red Ferrari. <laughs> contemplate. I wish. <laughs> Maybe a little matchbox <laughs> car to play with Axel. That's about all I can afford at the moment. But, um, but it's, um, again, more in a mentoring um, role uh, in, in just 
helping others to um, kind of right themselves mm. where they, they feel that um, life's maybe gotten the better or the upper hand. Mm. you know on them because i definitely know what that feels like i was gonna say like you do so much like you know you help so many people with weight loss and you've got a beautiful wife and kids and family and then to hear that you suffer from depression it's like but he's it's like he's got it all you know? yeah like I, I think that's again that's that's perception like it's um you know I, I wouldn't say you know the depression or you know over over the years is is anything like you know what some others have been through mm. um and and you know, still go through, um, but um, yeah, I definitely had you know moments. dark moments and, mm -hmm. and things, and it can be challenging. But that's where I've um, you know meditation and, and the like, you know, the exercise, which has been a part of my life ever since I was I was little, mm. um, really helped to um, to ground me in that sense, and um, just mm. just make sense of um, this crazy thing. Sure. Cool life. Yeah, yeah. Are you up for playing a little game? Yeah, sure. <laughs> it's uh, never have I ever. It's either I have, or I have never. I'm going to ask you some questions, and uh, you have to tell me oh, whether you've you got have to answer Ooh. some too. Yes. I do. Yeah, I'm on the hot seat. And if you've got um, some stories that go along with you, what you like to hear about them too. Mm. Never have I ever commando gone commando. <laughs> <laughs> You have all the time. He says, "It's been my name." He says, "I have." It's actually. Is that how you believe got it or it? not? <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> believe it or not, though, there's uh, there's actually photos to prove it. Oh no, oh, really? Yeah. So you'd have to ask Michelle. All oh, right. Is that what happened? We were you actually you Google yourself. Well, no, no, no. They won't. They will not be up on the internet. Are you but, sure? We'll go look afterwards. But, um, no, we we went away. And I love, you know, as I was saying, the meditation side of things, breathing and um, stoicism and the like. Mm. And where we were was cold and there was a pool. <laughs> so I thought, I'm going to go in this pool and see how cold it was. So I stripped off completely <laughs> naked and jumped in and oh my God. It was cold? It, it, it was like I'd been kicked. Oh, oh it hurt. I was... Well, my next question was going to be never have I ever had sex on the beach. Ooh. But you know, a pearl, goodness. a pool could suffice. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> well, Michelle wasn't coming anywhere near the pool. It was freezing, so that wasn't going to happen. But um, I have never. I grew up you in have? Queensland. <laughs> yeah, and you grew up in Queensland. My goodness, so did I. And you haven't. Oh dear, it's a ride, isn't it? If you're in Queensland, I'm not telling any stories about that. Okay, one. never have I ever gotten a tattoo you've regretted. Oh yes, I have. Oh. I'm kind of, I'm kind of, I've got quite a lot. You can give us a look I, at them if you like. I, yeah. <laughs> it's the one, I don't regret so it, but there's one change. on the back of my neck yep. yes. called, in, it, it, well, not called, but the word is inevitable. But the way in which it's written, yes. or the, the, what do you call it? The, the font. The font. The font. Yeah. Um, Does it look a bit girly? No, it <laughs> makes it, I, I've had so many different people say, what does that say? Because... Does it say irresistible? Oh. And then things like, okay, I'm just like... Turn around and show us now. Yes. <laughs> Can you see? Uh, it does too. Oh, it does too. Are you sure it's spelt right? It is spelt right. Yes, yes. And they're I like, is it say irresistible? Oh, there's been a few yeah. other words. And you know, I'm like, do you really think I'm going to tattoo? So I've got to yeah, then give the explanation. Yes, I'm going yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna to tattoo irresistible on myself. Yeah, and then like someone goes, heartthrob yeah. or something. <laughs> <laughs> never have I ever played strip poker. I've never. Boring. Commando. Boring no, I, I, <laughs> Hanging in the wrong <laughs> circle. <laughs> yeah, it must be. I played strip tennis. Strip oh, tennis? Yes. Oh, is that a Out of Morgan <laughs> Valley. If you lose a point, you've got to take a piece of clothing off. Really? Oh my God, he's going to start a new fad. Oh. It was good fun. It was <laughs> easy to play that. No, did I didn't end up completely yeah. naked. I wouldn't go any less than my underwear. Because I was on You went commando yeah. that day. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever no. invented that was a tennis player, wasn't no. it? <laughs> never, have a, never have I ever faked an injury to get out of something. Oh. Of course I, I have. have. <laughs> I don't feel like training today, Michelle. I've pulled a hammy. Yes. <laughs> Maybe not so much lately. <laughs> but in definitely my younger years in the army. Mm -hmm. 
Oh. A, so what they call the RAP, so it's Regimental Aid Post. Mm. And when you're young and you're first into the unit and you've got a lot of the older hands that have been around, they give you a hard time. <laughs> and you had to do PT, physical training, every morning. Mm. And the line that the RAP <laughs> to like get out, oh, I'm feeling a bit sick. I've got a bit of a cold. I've hurt my knee. It was just. It was like a monologue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, there's probably nothing wrong with you. You're just scared about what's going to turn yeah. up in PT. Just want a day off. Yeah, yes. yeah. Never have I ever snooped through my partner's phone without them knowing. Ooh. No, I oh. haven't. I probably have. Yeah, yeah I'll do that. Terrible, Muriel. Right, last one. Never have I ever joined the Mile High Club. <laughs> I don't. He obviously has. Yeah, oh, gosh. Otherwise, it'd be a quick decision. <laughs> yeah, like, come on, swing that bat. Come on, what did you all say? I will have said, I have never. I have never. I don't know Come how on, you Commando, we're waiting on you. Really? This, yeah, this conversation people have about, you know, Mile High Club and being in the toilets. I, I can barely fit in, let alone <laughs> anyone else fitting in. Mm. So I don't get that. Have you? I guess no. depends on the, <laughs> the, the scope. I'm going to say, say no. No, you, no, you can't lie. Never have, ever, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never have ever. Never have a line on the talk short. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I'm cooling myself. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, cheers. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. I finished it. Oh, you cheers. finished your water. Yeah. <laughs> Thank cheers. you. Cheers, cheers, and have a fabulous weekend. Thank yes. you so Thank much. Thank you.